This is a direct quote from one Tim Burton, a man who did not direct this movie. He directed the previous two Batman movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a quote about this movie, which he didn't direct. My goodness. He said, please leave a like on this YouTube video. And then he said, I always hated those titles like Batman Forever. That sounds like a tattoo that somebody would get when they're on drugs or something. Or something some kid would write in their yearbook to somebody else. I have high problems with some of those titles. What a grouch. (laughs) Well, he was going to call his version Batman Continues. Right? And what's the difference between Returns and Forever? Come yeah. on, man. What are you doing? I don't disagree. It seems like a very personal grudge, I think. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what the deal is between Burton and Schumacher. but No, no. They actually had a meeting. Uh, and Schumacher was like, do you mind if I do this? And Burton's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Okay. But I have one proviso. Don't call it Forever. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Schumacher! <laughs> but Batman Continues is nothing. Mm, it's absolutely. like Batman, his ear is. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. do you know? There's no like, there's, where's the impact? I, that's true, but also like, what does Batman Forever mean? Well, I think this movie should be called Batman and Robin and the next one should be called Batman Forever. But, you, but do you only think that because Batman and Robin, the last one is the last one in this sort of generation of Batman films? No, because this one is the introduction of Robin. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. That's true. Anyways, Mason, Water Brothers and McDonald's finally got their kid version of Batman yep. that they were they were after. Mm. Now we did talk about this before we started recording, but it's not without its adult elements, including it's it's a little bit horny, isn't it's it? It's pretty horny, I think. You were saying that you think the next one is hornier. I remember the next one having more butt shots, but that okay, doesn't right. speak to the overall horniness. That's true. I think that that horniness is specific to people who love butt shots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's right. But fair. I think as a general general audience appeal for horniness, I think this may. Maybe, maybe takes the cake, as, Interesting. It, as it were. Beefcake, if bat you wouldn't cake. mind. Bat the, cake. Bat beefcake. <laughs> the bat beefcake, that's yeah. right. I will say this, though. It is definitely more of a Batman movie than the previous movie. Mm-hmm. And yes. there's some really fun and great, specifically Batman moments. I mean, even that opening sequence and Batman is trapped in a safe and it's being dragged by a helicopter mm. and it's filling with acid that's... and there's the most annoying man in the world is in there with him. The last guy you want in that right. safe, you know? Oh! Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, the yeah. last man you want screaming in your ear. I think second last, the one guy you wouldn't want in the safe with you is a guy from later in the movie when Batman <laughs> swings down from the sky and a guy in the crowd goes, Wow, that's Batman! Yeah! <laughs> Settle down, mate. Settle down. You live down. in Gotham. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, no, that opening sequence, that is straight out of a Batman comic of a certain yeah. era and it is straight out of the 1960s Batman TV series, if they had any money, which they didn't, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, they did for the time. Mm. I mean, there's great other moments where, like, he's got a little slide under his desk. Sure. Down to a Batcave, because he has multiple, I guess. That sequence where he goes into his office, Wayne Enterprise's office, and he says, lock, and the door's lock, and then he sits in his chair and he says, chair. What happens if he says those words in a different context, like maybe during a business meeting. What sure. happens then? Well, he doesn't. That's what I think happens. It's he just doesn't, Mason. Okay. I'm just saying there's a lot of sexual harassment lawsuits <laughs> in the cards. If he's like, hmm, you know, I think maybe on the on the warehouses we should add a different lock. Mr. Wayne, let me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might be right. There's the moment when he leaps through a fire. Mm-hmm. That's great. Love that. What does he do before that? He activates something on his belt, maybe? Is it a fight? Is it just general fireproofing? Yeah, it's the cape and it kind of shrink wraps around okay, him. Okay, it's and the shrink wrap button. Him, okay, right, right. Okay. Some kind of vacuum situation. Okay, so he's upgraded from fruit roll up to shrink wrap. So yeah, that's love interesting. that. This one's inedible, I'm pretty confident. Oh, just quickly, one yes. more thing. Where, like you mentioned, he drops down through the ceiling onto a fountain and then flips off it. Mm. Incredible. Amazing. Mm. How did Val Kilmer do it? I, I don't know. I loved that bit, though. Probably practice. He probably and dedication, yeah. yeah. This is definitely more at, a more athletic Batman. Even though he can't breathe through his nose. You notice that? His mouth's always like... There's some real wet make-out noises as yeah. well. <laughs> anyway, the question I was going to ask you, James, is did you like it as a kid? Yeah. Okay, interesting. I, okay. think, I don't think it's great. And I think despite having... Like a big visual style, mm-hmm. and it's a bit horny. Mm-hmm. It doesn't kind of have the personality right, of the okay. previous two. Because I think that when this came out, I did see it at the cinemas, and I think I wanted to like it, but I didn't like it. Yeah. But now, I still don't really like it, but I think it has a lot of charm to it. Agree. Like, I'm, I, I think, you know, that the first two were kind of this faux... 
grim, gothic. You know, it was it was more or less on a similar level of campiness. Sure. But they're just greyer. Yeah. And I think that when this was sort of brought into the 1960s Technicolor era, Grampiness. I'm like, well, this is no, this isn't for me. I'm a, everything looks like an action figure, and I'm recently off action figures, <laughs> so I don't like it. But. In, in a rewatch, I think the bat you were, suit... You were weaned off action that's figures. Right, that's right. I barely had any action figures on me in the cinema. <laughs> but now that I'm on an adult man who just has action figures again somehow... <laughs> on your belt. Yes, exactly. I thought this, you know, visually astounding. And Agreed. I loved it. You know, I was against this Batmobile at the time. But now, great design. Yeah. This weird neon undercurrent to the whole thing. Loved it. I think it does probably, we'll talk about it next week, go too far the next time right, around. Right, right, right. The new Batmobile, it sort of even works in continuity because it's way narrower than the original version. So it sort of makes oh, sense okay. if they repaired the one from Returns. Yeah, maybe yeah. it would look like that kind of thing. And there's a sort of continuity in the, the suit he's wearing looks like, mostly like the original suit until it gets the super horny upgrade. Oh, love a bit of that. Mm. I'd love to talk about it. But can we first talk about uh, Val Kilmer? Yes. Now, I think there's a lot in this movie of hinting at like a deeper, darker, more kind of three-dimensional Batman, mm-hmm. yeah. which is in an extended cut, which we'll talk about in a bit. And I think Val Kilmer definitely adds to that. But I kind of wish they let him do more because i like Mm. him as bruce wayne especially i think like aesthetically Mm -hmm. love that love everything he's doing val kilmer's got that charisma he's got it (laughs) yep but he's just they're just like he cuts a fine figure oh he cuts a fine figure all right but go on could have darkened his hair a bit but whatever it's fine no christian bowers like it's that kind of like oh come on but yeah he's just i don't know man it's just it's it's just not quite right you know i think he's talked about how look even though he enjoyed it and maybe there was some clashing on set I'll get to in a minute. He felt like Batman is this kind of empty shell because Mm. when kids would come to visit and they'd see Batman, but that wasn't really exciting to them. It was more like, I'm going to put on the cowl. I'm going to get in the car. Like kids like that element of it. They don't care who Batman is. And I don't think that's strictly true because that's also a result of him not having as much interesting stuff to kind of do. Mm. in this movie. He also has an absolute panic attack when a vase gets knocked over at one point. That's true. (laughs) So I enjoyed that. It's like it's unlocked a memory. (laughs) It was actually a vase that came through the window that (laughs) night. I should be vase man or vase man man, in America. Two-face. But I mean, I guess they get, he gets a more fleshed out love story with Chase Meridian. And by fleshed out, I mean, they have like three scenes together and he's like, I love you now. I've never felt like this about anyone before. This woman, I've I saw I saw her on a roof, and then I saw her in a corridor, <laughs> and I saw her on another roof, and I'm like, wow. And it's Nicole Kidman, and that's cool. Yeah, don't yeah. mind a bit of that. He said. Now Val Kilmer, as I mentioned, there's a bit of drama. The drama not being that he got six million dollars for this. Nice. Uh, well done, kudos by the way. Mm. But Val Kilmer and Joel Schumacher they clashed during filming, and Schumacher described Kilmer as childish and impossible. And at one point, Kilmer apparently... Smarten up and <laughs> grow up. <laughs> grow up and put your cod piece on, Val. We're doing serious business here. Grow up and get in the car, and then we're going to have it shoot a grappling hook up and it can drive up a wall. Grow up, Val Kilmer. <laughs> According to Schumacher, Kilmer apparently refused to talk to him for two weeks at one point. And he also said, Val did me two great favours when I wanted him to play Batman. He said, yes... Then he created a situation which allowed me to not have him play Batman again. So they were both happy. Happy instances, which I will always be grateful. Also, apparently at the time, Val Kilmer was going through a divorce. So, you know, that could have been. But if you watch interviews of Val Kilmer, like, about this, Mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, it was fun. It was a bit of fun. I I liked it. People said I hated Jim Carrey, but I didn't. I thought he was cool. Yeah, it was Tommy Lee Jones that hated Jim Carrey. (laughs) Oh, Mason. Uh, Before we get to that, Val Kilmer actually said that the hardest days on set were more when he was playing Bruce Wayne as opposed to being in the Batman costume. Interesting, And apparently that was because of, like, the psychologically depressive weight of the character. And he was often heard just saying to himself, oh, I'm feeling blue, I'm feeling down. And that actually led to the working title of this this movie being Blue Harvest. (laughs) Which was... He's so proud of himself, folks. (laughs) This is the highlight of his week, I bet. (laughs) Which is, of course, the uh, original title for the uh, working title for Star Wars 1977. He's done it, everybody. Let's just (laughs) leave him in this for a moment to think about what he's done. Can we cut? Can we cut for a minute? Yeah, sure. (laughs) Anyways, you want to talk about Tommy Lee Jones? Uh, Yes, we do. I was going to say maybe just um, maybe Val Kilmer and uh, and, uh, Schumacher just met and just didn't get along. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're like, this guy sucks. And that's right. And then you end up doing a podcast with him for 10 years. (laughs) 
It's true. So Tommy Lee Jones, first of all, what are you doing? Mm. What is this? I'll tell you what it is. What I think it is. He thinks he's Jack Nicholson's Joker. I think they both think they're Jack Nicholson's Joker. I think both. Well, I think Schumacher wanted a Joker. He wanted a manic Joker character. And Burton was like, no, I killed him though. Yeah. For real, I 100% killed him. Yep. And also you can't afford Jack Nicholson. And this isn't the era when we recast anybody except Batman. We obviously <laughs> recast him. And Two-Face because Harvey Dent was in we the We recast first movie. him also, but we can't do any recasting or we can't bring back the Joker. Uh, so you're going to have to make do. And he's just like, yeah, well, I'll just have two Jokers. Whatever, they're probably all the same. Was Schumacher a Batman comic fan? Yes, he was. Right, interesting. But from a sp very specific era, which you can tell. Yeah, because I think somebody along the line, maybe in the script writing, maybe on, on set, was just like, doesn't matter. Yeah. The, the Batman villains, they're just cackling lunatics. And I think it totally works for Jim Carrey. I, I think... hate it. Really? Yeah. See, I like it because it's very annoying. Oh, and okay. I love it when he's just... Shuffling crotch first through the bat cave, you know, uh -huh. just having the time of his life. See, I and I think he looks like James Corden at an intersection, Mason. Oh boy. just crotch first. Oh my god, just going for it. I think it's probably because that's ne that was never the characterization of the Riddler that I enjoyed. You know, I think it's like the Frank Gorsham kind of vibe. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're just like thirty years later. Yeah, you're probably right, but I think. It's probably even too manic. Maybe I just like the idea of the Riddler as being a more low-key kind of guy. Maybe doing some riddles instead of a big yeah. TV-draining machine. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's it, James. Maybe that's Maybe it. Maybe that has nothing to do with the character of the Riddler and they just added a couple of riddles at the end. So. Also, the thing that I found odd is that he decides to adopt his supervillainous persona from something that already exists in this universe but is never explained. Just a guy in a... There's some character oh, that's just yeah. in a little, little green suit with a little green bowler hat. Who's that guy? <laughs> Great question. And why don't... And the people in this universe, the newscaster's like, this man's been leaving puzzles all over the place. We're calling him the Riddler. You'd call him the Puzzler, but also... Isn't there a Puzzler? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think and there's a, a Puzzler. Yeah, and a, and a Clue Master and a bunch of others. Yeah. <laughs> but surely they'd look at this guy and go, oh, it's green question mark guy from the cereal boxes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Lucky Charms or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yep, I don't disagree. Stupid. Yeah. Well, you're not the only one who thinks it's stupid. Tommy Lee Jones famously has this quote, and let's play it. I said, hey, Tommy, how you doing like that? And the blood just drained from his face. And he went like to hug me and yeah. he said, I hate you. I really don't like you. And uh, he said, I cannot sanction your buffoonery. <laughs> you cashed the check, baby. That's right. That's why right. Harvey Dent. So yeah, th they met and just uh, Tommy Lee Jones is like, I'm just not with mm. you and I won't. Yeah, yeah. And stop it. Not on set. And not in private. Yeah. And not at a restaurant. But look, Tommy Lee Jones is also going too big. Mm, but I think, if I had to guess, and I've not seen any behind the scenes, I imagine it's he goes big, and yep. then the moment it's cut, he's off. Sure, He's just yeah. sitting in his chair and he's smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, whatever, yeah, but how's, the, how's the baseball game going? Whatever. Like, he doesn't care. <laughs> how's the baseball game That's going? That's what he says. That's, That's a great question, I too. I think so, yeah. But no, he did obviously do it for a paycheck, and apparently his son was like, That's my favourite character, which is not true. Two-Face is nobody's favourite character as a kid. I mean, as an adult man, I'll accept that. <laughs> but no child's like, I love the character of Two-Face. Mm. That's my favourite character. I love the duality, they would say. Some kids, though, they might like Robin. And what I love about this Robin is that he has sideburns because he's 25. Sure. And it's just a man adopting another man. Mm, that's right. And that's fun. No, I've got to get out of here because otherwise social services will track me down. Why? Because you're you're breaking into orphanages as a, mm. as a grown man. Maybe that's it, yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you like his kung fu laundry? I loved it. Ba -ba 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 you know? Yes. Yeah. What I do like, though, Mason, is the first time he fights some thugs, he does really well. Mm. And then when Batman comes in, it's just... <coughs> Mm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah. What's this? Karate chop to the throat, mate. Come exactly. On, bring him down. And later he goes, yeah, I was thinking about my parents being murdered when I was fighting you. That wasn't a fight. Mm. Come on. What are you talking it's about? It's a big sook, we'd call it in Australia. <laughs> we would. <laughs> a big time tanty. Big time tanty, yeah. How did you enjoy the holy rusted metal Batman? And Batman goes, huh? Huh? He goes, you know, because it's metal and it's full of holes. And Batman goes, oh. Yeah, I like that too. Did you? No, I didn't like it. I didn't like that. I didn't like the fact that he's like, what's my superhero name? Could it be Nightwing? <laughs> yeah, man, later. Come on. Yeah. Obviously, Dick Grayson learned about Nightwing from Superman because Nightwing's a Kryptonian, Kryptonian legend. Kryptonian or whatever. legend. 
I agree. You've not met Superman, this version of Dick Grayson. Uh, what do you think of the new suits, though? I mean, we've got the new Robin suit. Mm-hmm, yep. Uh, and we've also got... Well, we, he's got his classic Robin costume, sort of, from the Flying Graysons. Mm-hmm. And then you've got, like, the sonar situation. I like the sonar suit. I just... I don't know. I feel like it needs to be broken up more because it's just kind of one right, 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 vibe. Right. Like, there's okay. no like no, there's no there's kind of even standout belt mm, sure. or boots to kind of break it up. All right, you know? all right. Yeah, but yeah. no, I don't mind the actual look mm. of it. Apparently it weighed 100 pounds and you can't hear in it. Val Kilmer That's the reverse of a bat. I agree. And Val Kilmer said, whatever boyish excitement I had going on was crushed by the reality of the bat suit. We hear that a lot, don't we? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of interesting that they have yet to go back to the cloth bat suit. Yeah. There's ways to do it and not make it look ridiculous. Do it like a Kevlar. Like a light Kevlar. Like a, mm. If John Wick can wear a bulletproof suit yes, uh-huh. and can just hold it up and just... Stop a rocket launcher or yeah. whatever. Then Batman can wear a bulletproof Batman T-shirt he got at Kmart. Exactly. So do you remember the? I bit- was going to uh, say though, I do like the Robin suit. I think yeah. It's good. The f- the the only downside is that on, it's on a full grown man who's mm. exactly the same height as Batman. You want to see a boy? No. Put me in a boy. Put me in a boy. Also no. No, this is probably the correct choice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Considering the the. The, yeah, the cod, the cod pieces, pieces and yeah, so forth. Absolutely. Yes. You know what I also don't like about the Riddler? He knows too many things. He's got well, too many. He's got too many areas of expertise. Well, he's sucking everyone's knowledge out. Which, by the way, I think would be too much. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can know too many things. Mm. I've found that, so I've just stopped. Oh yeah. How many things do you know now? Twelve, maybe. I know less. I, I win. <laughs> Checkmate. <laughs> Well, now I know that, so now I know even more. Oh, I do like the ending, though, where Riddler makes Batman make the ultimate choice. Save Nicole Kidman, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. save Chris O'Donnell, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or just save both of them. Right, sure. And I think he chose correctly. In saving both of them, You sure. never know when a lunatic's going to mm. show up and make you make the ultimate choice. Save two people or one person. That's right. That's great. And I also liked how both the villains made the ultimate choice of learning Batman's secret identity. So by the end, you know, both of them either have to die or lose their memory. That's that right. Fun, right. And we get a bit of both. Mm-hmm. What's interesting about this is as well, that Batman's like, listen, if you kill, listen, if you kill, two, if you kill Two-Face, you can't do it with hate in your heart. So Batman just does it. Yeah. Just throws a handful of coins at him. <laughs> well, he says, he says you shouldn't kill him because you'll have hate in your heart forever or what have you. But then they team up and he's like, you know, I might kill Two-Face and Batman's like, a oh, man's got to do what a man's got to do, honestly. It's fine. <laughs> you it's know fine. He... I've killed so many people by accident on purpose <laughs> with that flame that comes out of the back of the Batmobile. Yeah, was... you should have seen that. That was actually fucking wild that I did that. It's... I really should be in jail, but I'm rich, so I'm not. Listen, I feel like it's not very in character for Batman to kill Two-Face by throwing a bunch of coins at him. You should have crash-tackled him off a roof like he did in The Dark Knight and right? killed him that way. Sure. That's the real Batman, yeah, 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 you yeah, know? Yeah. Well, I mean, a thought I did have there... If he didn't intend to kill him, what did he think was going to happen there, just throwing all the coins in the air? Do you think Two-Face was just going to be like, huh, a lot of coins, makes you think. Well, I guess I've given up my life for crime. <laughs> yeah. And the second thing I wondered w- while watching this movie is that Dr. Chase Meridian invites Batman over uh, for, for sexy, horny, romantic times. Very sexy. Very sexy. And then when he comes over, she's like, oh, actually, I'm in love with uh, someone else. It's Bruce Wayne. You should go. What if she didn't have that thought? What were they going to do? Great question. Was he going to take, was he going to reverse fruit roll up the suit, just <laughs> rip off everything below the neck <laughs> yeah. and leave the mask on? Yeah. Because surely she would figure it out eventually. I'd imagine she would, yeah. Mm. Maybe he would have thrown a handful of coins at her and fled. I can only hope. <laughs> uh, the soundtrack, of course, is famous for a number of songs. It's U2's Hold Me Through Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. Mm-hmm, sure, sure, uh, sure. Which was the first single that they released. Obvious mistake. Because not in their lives. No. Not in their tenure as a <laughs> no, band. No, of course not. Mm. But, of course, the first song they should have released was the song that everybody knows, which is Seal's Kiss from Her Eyes. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, that's a pretty cool song, man. It's pretty cool. I Don't you think? I agree. It's a good song. Yeah. Do you want to do some green trivia? Yes. But not before the guy who shouts Rodney Mason. Rodney! 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 So Jim Carrey's original idea was to shave a question mark into his scalp, but that had to be scratched because he was in court also filing his divorce, apparently. And so he shaved it into his pubic hair. (laughs) Nice. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams was offered the role by Warner Brothers of the Riddler, but refused due to being bitter about being used as bait to lure Jack Nicholson to commit to play the Joker. Oh, yes. Uh, Michael Jackson apparently lobbied hard for the role as the Riddler, but was ignored. That seems to happen a lot. I want to be Spider-Man. 
Obviously not Michael Jackson. What are you talking about? Mm. Go back to hell where he is. I'm going to cut that out. That can't <laughs> go in the video. Yeah, you'll attract the stands. <laughs> Sam Raimi was apparently the first choice oh. as director, but I feel oh, like... not as Batman. No. Okay. You can make a great Batman, but uh, Bruce Campbell would. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Even yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Make him Batman. Oh, yep. How good would Dark that be? Dark Knight Returns Batman, yes, please. So Sam Raimi was the studio's first choice as director, but I feel like that wouldn't have made a good project for Sam Raimi or the studio. I don't think either of them would have kind of met in the middle for whatever he would have made, you know? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Uh, in terms of Dick Grayson slash Robin, mm -hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio turned it down because he didn't like the direction it was heading. Uh, Mark Wahlberg was considered, as was Matt Damon, Jude Law, Ewan McGregor, Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, Toby Stevens, and Scott Speedman. Whoa. From Underworld. That's right. And Grey's Anatomy? What else? What's he in? What was he in before Underworld? God, jeez. I'll look it up. Party of Five? He was in one of those. Felicity. He was in Felicity. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Uh, and as for Batman, some of the names that were considered included. William Baldwin, who got very close, apparently. Daniel Day-Lewis. That would... He, no, he just wouldn't. He just couldn't get him to do that. Yeah. See, I think he's like a gosling. I think he's like, like a Ryan gosling, not the, the small baby goose. <laughs> he's, a, a, But he could be. He yeah. could live as one for a year and then do the job. <laughs> but I think if you were like, this is an acting challenge, you've got to make this work... Yeah. I think you could convince him to do it. I think you could, but it'd have to be in a movie that's not this. Oh, yeah. And also he's retired. He's that's a cobbler right. or whatever. I don't know what he does. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kurt Russell, Alec Baldwin, Ethan Hawke, Ray Fiennes, Tom Hanks, Johnny Depp, Keanu Reeves, who of course did end up playing Batman animated. There was also a rumor that Christian Bale auditioned for Robin, but apparently that's not true. He did, however, and there's footage of this, he auditioned for for Batman Begins in the Batman Forever cow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And, of course, Val Kilmer wore the bat cowl again in an episode of Life's Too Short with Warwick Davis. Huh. It's Val Kilmer. Oh, you're an actor. Now, the box office for this. Oh, yes. You might be like, did it do better than Batman Returns? Did it? Yes. Whoa. It cost $100 million, and it is the highest grossing film of 1995 in the US box office at 336 million worldwide. Apparently people were smashing posters out of bus stops and just <laughs> tearing through all the McDonald's Happy Meal yeah, glass yeah, 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 yeah. mugs you could get. Oh my God. That's right. You've just unlocked a formative memory of my childhood. You are James. welcome. Oh, you get the There's another thing that you know. Oh my, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but for people who don't, who didn't know, you bought yourself a, a meal at McDonald's yep. and for probably an extra buck or something, they would, they would bring you out a hand carved mm. Christmas Crystal mug with the proverbial mug of, of Batman, Robin, uh, Riddler, and probably Dr. Chase Meridian yes. for the girls. <laughs> for the girls, That yeah. one was pink. Yeah, absolutely it was. But so just to quickly talk about the original version of this, Joel Schumacher, as mentioned, he was a Batman fan, but he wanted to actually make this a prequel based on Frank Miller's year one. Oh, well, then he succeeded, didn't he? But I think, though, you can see elements of that in this. Okay. Because there is an extended cut of this that people do want to see that has a much more darker tone, and you get hints of that. It's more focused also around Thomas Wayne's diary and Bruce Wayne's guilt. Okay, There's a moment where sure. he goes further into the Batcave and he confronts a giant bat at that one point. That does happen. A man okay, you're right. bat. It's not man bat. It's just a man-sized man -sized bat, bat yeah. hallucination. <laughs> but at the end of the day, Warner Brothers were like... How about do none of that? Yeah. And he went, all right... <laughs> Do the thing we want you to yeah. do. And he's like, yeah, okay, I can do that. And look, I think this is the perfect middle ground between Returns and what comes next. Oh, I yes. think tonally for this era and for getting, you know, the right kind of audience in that, you know, Warner Brothers want, mm -hmm. this is exactly where it needs to be, even if it's not great. For sure. Yeah. Anyways, next week we will be back to talk about Batman and Robin Mason. Ooh. And people, I know they want to see that early. And of course you would. And you can <laughs> if you head over to bigsandwich.co where in addition to early videos, there's bonus podcasts. There's a bunch of exclusive stuff behind there, ad-free, including movie commentaries, including other things. Isn't that right, Mason? That's right. And you can sign up early. And when the video comes out, you can be like, it's Batman and Robin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pointing. You can point right at it. Mm -hmm, early. Right. Also, of course, our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that actually comes out... There Sunday as opposed to Monday, wow. if you are interested. 
Uh, would you like to see Val Kilmer return as Batman in some description? I know health-wise he's not doing great. And then I'd like him to enjoy his retirement, James. <laughs> you don't want to. Cram- How dare you? You don't want to cram him back in the suit. You know, yeah, let's cram him back in the suit. Let's parade him in front of a Comic Con audience. <laughs> you can ask. You can answer stupid questions for an hour. Yeah, sounds great, James. <laughs> okay, cool. No, I don't want. Oh, that. okay. I thought you were being legit and real for a no, second. No, I wasn't. I'll never be legit or real. Wow, that's great. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks everybody. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see. See you next week. Goodbye. And thanks to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. Bye.